Hi, this is Eric from the African Homestead. Welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build a quick and easy nesting box for your rabbit. Now, before we start the build, I wanna show you some of the things that I like about this particular nesting box design. Uh, one is that I incorporate the mesh bottom. If you're living in a cold climate, you may not want to do this, but here in Liberia, it never gets cold. Uh, we don't have to worry about frost or freezing. And I like how um, any, any kind of urine or droppings can fall through the bottom. Um, it also provides good ventilation. The other, the other thing I like about this nesting box is it has a, a flat spot up here. And actually, it's a good place for the dough once the... Uh, the kids start jumping out and chasing her around, it's a good place for her to come up here and hide. Also, it has a nice open design so that I'm able to easily see inside and check on the kits as they continue to grow the first couple of weeks while they're in this nesting box. It's easy for the doe to come and, and go. And one thing that you'll notice about my nesting box is it's smaller than maybe some that you've seen uh, online. It's about 14 inches deep, about nine and a half inches wide on the outside. That's because the rabbits that we have in West Africa are smaller than the meat rabbits that you're going to find in North America and Europe. So you want to think about that when you're building your own nesting box. Maybe instead of 14 inches, you'll build it 18 inches. Instead of 9.5, maybe it'll be 12 inches wide. Just so your rabbit has enough room. You don't want it too roomy. You want to keep it cozy. And you'll be surprised how easily a large rabbit will fit in one of these. But you want to size it to the size of your rabbit. Now one thing I don't like doing is spending money. So I'm gonna be using some of this scrap material here. It's not ideal, it's a little thinner than what I would like, but uh, it's gonna do the job. So one thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're looking at the design of anything is what is its purpose, what is its end use? In this case, the end use is to hold kits, to hold baby rabbits, uh, keep them warm, keep them safe, um, kind of a dark place and have enough room for the mother to, for the doe to nurse them. And so with that, it doesn't need to be pretty. That's not necessary, necessary in this design. Uh, it doesn't really even have to be that strong. Uh, it, it'll need to hold the weight of the doe on top. Um, the kits don't really have much weight at all. And so strength is not a primary factor. You just want it to hold together. It just primarily needs to be functional. It needs to work. And so in this case, you know, I use some, some fairly thick plywood here, uh, three quarter inch, and it's really a lot stronger than it needs to be. It's heavier than it needs to be, even though it doesn't weigh that much. And so what I'm, I'm gonna end up using is this leftover plywood. You can see I've used it for painting and other things. And it's actually, um, looks like quarter inch plywood. And so it's quite a bit thinner. So I'm gonna use the quarter inch plywood for the sides because I don't have um, large enough pieces of thicker plywood for the sides and then for the back the front and the top um, I think I have enough uh, three-quarter inch plywood I'll be able to use that so in that case I'll be nailing in the sides because to nail in the in the side of quarter inch plywood is a lot more difficult and it's not going to be as strong and so it's going to follow as far as how it nails together it's going to be the same way as this one so let's go ahead and get started now because I already have an existing nesting box I'm just going to use it to kind of as a template and just mark off the side from this and that'll tell me roughly how to mark it and just continue complete the lines and I'll be able to cut from there and I'll go ahead and continue that I could use a straight edge, but this is really just getting me close. And so I'll be able to make my initial cuts just using this. And I want to go ahead and reset my fence depth. You 
can see it's basically a rectangle with the corner cut off. So there I have the two sides complete. Now I'm going to use these two pieces of scrap here that are three quarter inch. I'm going to use those for uh, the back, the front, and the top. So the back you'll need to measure from the inside. And mine is eight inches by nine inches. Okay, so there's the back. The front, it's going to be the same 8 inch width by looks like 4 and 3 quarter. And really what you're looking at is it needs to be slightly less than this. And this one is also about 4, so I can make it 4 and a half. And it will fit this one a little bit better. Yeah, I'll do 4 and a half. So eight inches by four and a half inches. There is the front piece. Next we'll need the top. The top will be the same eight inches wide by, uh, we can go Kind of the same way here, I can measure it off of this. We can go six inches, would be great. But actually this one is five inches, which is also great. So I just need to cut this down to eight inches. Okay, so there we have the main components. sides Our back the front and the top so the trick is get everything nailed together kind of straight Somehow I did something wrong. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. This will go in here. The other on the front. Next, what I want to do is go ahead and start some of these nails. I'm using a one and a half inch nail. And so what I want to do is go ahead and start some of these. all started. bend one over. Okay, so there is the basic box. So the next thing we do is to put the wire mesh on the bottom. Now you're going to want to cut the wire mesh just a little bit oversized so you have some to wrap around the corners. So the next thing you need to do is kind of get it more or less centered and then in this case it looks like I can just take two squares or four squares off each corner allow me to fold it over okay. and 
just manually kind of fold it over the corner. And then take it off and do the rest of the forming once you get that close. Okay. Then you just slip it into place. that and then take some one inch nails or something like that and just knock a few of those in to hold it into place actually let me take that back one inch nails worked when I was using a thicker wood on the side but these will actually stick through it's something you need to be aware of that they're actually going to come through on the inside and could injure the young kits. So I'm going to go with a different route on this. What I've done in the past is I usually tack this in place um, using this wood strip. And when I use the three quarter inch plywood and a quarter inch wood strip, the nails did not come through. But since I'm using thinner wood this time, I think what I'm going to do is kind of the opposite. I have some more scrap here of this three quarter inch plywood. I'm going to rip some strips and then just put those strips over here and nail everything into place and run the th nails through. It will finish it out to remove any possible sharp edges here, make it look nice. Not even, not that this has to look nice, but yeah, it's, it's nice to look nice. And, uh, and then also it'll hold this in place. So let me just rip some of those strips real quick. I go with two inches wide. No, let me take that back. I'm going to go with an inch and a half. make it but not by much it won't come through but it's it, you know it's a lot better to nail three quarter inch material into three quarter inch than the other way around but I'm just gonna go actually what I'm gonna do on the corners I'm gonna use a one and a half inch nail and go into the back just to give it a little added strength That's it. This is the quick and easy uh, rabbit nesting box. So you can see, uh, scrap materials didn't really cost me anything. The nails I have laying around, this wire I did just buy a new roll to fix up, to fix up my uh, rabbit hutches, replace some some that had rusted out. So that is it. My quick and easy rabbit nesting box that I shamelessly stole off other people on the internet and made my own. So I encourage you shamelessly steal this make it your own uh, from start to finish including time of starting and stopping the camera running for a couple extra tools 45 minutes so seriously this is an, this is a simple project minimal tools uh, if you don't have a circular saw you can use a handsaw but uh, supplies and tools very low cost so I encourage you to try building one of these nesting boxes for yourself if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below if you have any uh, ideas of how we can make it faster, better, cheaper, and all of that, uh, I'd love to hear your advice. But this is, a, this is today's project. It's super easy. I encourage you to try it out. So if you will, if you haven't subscribed to the African Homestead already, click the subscribe button. If you ding the bell, you'll get a notification every time I post a video. And I'm not one of those. I'm not up to posting every day or even every other day. For me, I'm lucky to get time uh, to, to edit and post videos once a week. Sometimes there'll be a second one, but uh, you won't hear too much from me all the time. So I encourage you to click that, click that bell so you get a notification. 
comment in the comment section below. Share this video with your friends that are just getting started in rabbits, and uh, I think they'd really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.